Hi, I'm Cindy Jatul. I teach biology and biotech at Roosevelt High School, and this lecture is going to focus on human evolution. So I'm going to shrink myself down here and begin. So our driving question is, how did humans evolve? Or as I like to say it here, this is going to be the greatest hits of our story because the story of human evolution is obviously a very long and complicated one, and we can't possibly cover it in one lecture. But we are going to just talk about some of the major, major themes of how we got to be who we are as a species. So I just wanted to say that a number of years ago, I remember when the question was, what really differentiated humans from the primates that we are closely related to? Did we first evolve a larger brain, larger than the other primates? Or did we first develop the ability to walk upright, which is known as bipedalism, walking on two legs instead of four? And for a very long time, and until relatively recently, by my time frame, I graduated high school in 1975. It was thought that the brain enlargement was the first thing that happened and was the thing that set us off on a different evolutionary path from all the other primates. But that hypothesis had to be thrown out based on factual information that was discovered, which clearly showed that the earliest human type species, or what we call hominids, were actually already bipedal. Okay, so on with the story. The goals of this lesson are for you to be able to describe what you learn by watching a video that covers the evolution of bipedalism. It's a short video, and I'm going to recommend that when we get to it, you pause this PowerPoint, watch the video, and then come back. The other goal is for you to describe an aspect of human evolution, and you have a choice here. Uh, you can look at closely related primate species. You can look at changes in our anatomy that drove this ability to walk upright. You could also look at how climate change impacted human evolution. So you have a choice of what you're going to do here. Let's take a look at the worksheet that accompanies this lesson. So this is basically like a note sheet for you. And you get to choose um, to do two out of the four. If you really are into this, do all four, but we're asking that you do at least two. So um, one of the activities is to look at our family tree and answer some questions about our closest relatives and tr try to get a sense of how the DNA evidence helps us decipher this information. Activity two is the question of how we got to be upright walkers or to have bipedalism. And so the, the video and some slides will help you answer this. Or you can choose to look at the question about how climate change has impacted human evolution. And finally, the fourth option is to uh, fill out this comparison looking at four different hominin species out of the many that are on the website for you to consider. So that's the worksheet. Let's take a look at the resources that are available for you to do this work. So our first goal is to look at the question of how bipedalism arose. So stop here and click on this link in the PowerPoint and watch this short and very, very interesting overview of some of the, the fossil evidence for how we became and how we know that we were bipedal millions of years ago. And you'll really like the 
the simulations of Artipithecus millions of years ago. So you got to watch this, get to the end of it in order to see simulations of what early hominids look like. Once you finish the video, then take some notes or while you're watching the video, think about what you would write in here for what you notice and what you wonder about. Okay, so pause here, watch the video, and then we will go on. Here is an overview of information available to fill out two of the four things on the um, worksheet. So activity one, our family tree. Activity two, bipedalism. Activity three, climate change and human evolution. Activity four, hominin species. Let's take a look at the first one. Here is our family tree. As in any evolutionary tree, you can look to the base of it for what is assumed to be the common ancestor to all of these various primates. And of course, here we are, and we can see who our closest relatives are and who our most distant relatives are. When you follow a branch, when you come to a junction like this, this represents a common ancestor. So here's the, uh, the last common ancestor for humans and chimpanzees. And then you go back here to find a common ancestor for humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas. And you can see that that was roughly 10 million years ago that we had a common ancestor. So that's how you can read this information. Over here on the right is a, is a tree that has included information about the, the, the relative similarity in terms of DNA. So human and chimpanzee, 98.2% of our DNA code is identical. Here's another representation of our family tree. And what's great about this is that it shows that this is really a complicated story. There have been all kinds of hominids that have existed going back to six, seven million years ago. There's this grouping here, then there's another group, and another group, and then finally there's the group that are in the same genus as us, the Homo genus. And here we are. So this shows us that human evolution was a story of, of branching and long periods of existence and then extinction and other hominids evolving, lasting for millions and millions of years, extinction, etc. This replaces an old idea that there was some kind of straight linear line between the earliest kinds of hominids and us. Nothing could be further from the truth. What's really more factual is this idea of a tree with many branches and much diversity in our history. For activity two, you can look at the anatomical changes that are important for us to be able to walk upright, to have the bipedal ability. So here we have our closest relative, the chimpanzee, and Australopithecine over here is a hominid three to four million years ago that was known to be up, an upright walker. And so you look at some of the, the key differences here in the, the structure of the pelvis. So we have a bowl-shaped, much shorter pelvis to support upright stature versus an animal that uses all four limbs to, to get around. And yes, chimps, you may say, they can walk. They can walk a short distance. They cannot do the kind of walking that we can do. They have to 
get around knuckle walking most of the time. And then you'll see another key feature here is the attachment of the skull to the spinal cord. Here, the, the attachment is further back relative to the skull. Here, it's uh, much more central. So you can compare an animal walking on four legs to an animal that walks on two legs, and you can see very distinct anatomical differences. Here, you can take a look again at some of the specific anatomical differences. When you take a look at the shape of the spine, the hominin has a S-shaped spine. And when you take a look at the pelvis, we see this change from this elongated pelvis to one that is much shorter and more bowl-shaped. In activity three, you go to this site and you can do some exploring about how climate impacted human evolution. So let's take a look at that together. To explore the impact of climate change on human evolution, you can look at things that are color-coded purple. And if you click on one of these, it will give you some information about the impacts of climate. And then if you click on one of these blue symbols, you'll get an idea about what was going on in terms of change in human evolution. Finally, your fourth option is to compare different hominids. And you can go to that same site that I showed you, except you're going to click on the red bars, which will allow you to explore all the variety of ancient hominids that we currently know about. Here you go. For option four, you click on the red bars, and this will give you information about the various hominid ancestors. So Artipithecus, here's some information. Here's information on Homo habilis, so named for um, the ability to make tools, handyman. So um, once again, Click on the red bars here in order to take care of filling out information for activity four. One thing I would like to point out when you're looking at this information is again, this is a great depiction of the reality that there was no straight line from an ancestor to our current species. And that there have many have been many different hominids throughout the past six, seven million years, some of them living at the same time as one another. And certainly we see that we are a relatively new species on the planet, and we haven't been around all that long, really. When you look at uh, Homo erectus, for example, around nine times longer than our species. Um, we can also see that here's Neanderthal, we have overlapped in terms of being here at the same time. So it's a, it's a fascinating history and one that is a lot more complex than what we sometimes see on cartoon depictions of human evolution coming in a straight line from an ancestor. So we have come to the conclusion of this lesson. In order to check your understanding, you want to make sure you can describe what you learned from the video that depicted Artipithecus um, about the evolution of bipedalism. And you want to be able to describe an aspect of human evolution, one of those four. What's next is to make a new entry in your learning tracking tool. Title it for Human Evolution. And if you're interested in this topic, then I highly recommend that you explore the videos and interactives from PBS's series, Your Inner Fish. And let me just quickly show you what that 
site looks like. Here is the inner fish site. And if you go here, you're going to be able to follow some really fascinating stories that show our uh, relationship to fish. And Neil Shubin is a fantastic narrator, storyteller, evolutionary biologist who wrote a book called Your Inner Fish. And um, here he is. He will tell you some fascinating stories about our similarities to fish. And then fish gave rise eventually to reptiles, and we still have anatomical evidence that links us to reptiles. And then eventually reptiles give rise to mammals, of which we are. And so you can get some fascinating information about that transition. So I highly recommend checking this series out. Thank you very much for watching. See you again.